So welcome to week two of our assignments and uh, in this video I would like to walk you quickly through the revised assignments uh, we had for this week. So first of all we would like to um, integrate some information from the GI header into the display of our document. In uh, particular the GI header contains information about the various people appearing in the texts um, so currently we are displaying those uh, people's names just in orange as inline elements and it would be nice if uh, when the user moves the mouse over um, one of the names there would be a pop-up with um, the additional information contained in the GI header. So if we look at the XML source of our document um, you'll see that up in the header we have this list person element um, listing the various people um, referenced by an XML ID. The same XML ID will also appear down in the text where the person is referenced. So if we look at, for example, Kurt Nier, um, there's this reference um, to ID P51057. Um, so let's go into our art and uh, change purse name to uh, show a pop up on mouse over. Um, the behavior to be used for this is called alternate and alternate basically switches between two states which are called the default and the alternate and um, correspondingly there are two parameters we have to set. One is the default and um, as default, we likely just want to display um, the text content of the current node. So as we had it before, uh, we will just enter a dot because in XPath this represents the current node, which is the first name and processing will continue there, um, finding the text of the person as written in the document. We add another parameter for the pop-up, which will be called alternate. So for the alternate, what we need to do is um, we need to take um, the reference uh, from the purse name, which is in attribute ref. So that would be attribute ref. Um, but then we need to look up the element corresponding to, to the ID in the ref in the TI header. So the easiest way to do this is to use the ID function, which is the standard XPath function. Um, the ID function takes two parameters. The first, first is the ID to look up. The second uh, is the context in which to do the lookup, because by default um, it doesn't know what the, what the context is or it uses the current node as context. So we have to specify um, the context for the lookup. Again, the easiest way to do this is to just point it to the document root of the current element. And um, the XPath function for this is called root. So we just pass root um, and then the current um, context node. And there's an additional difficulty here uh, because all the references as used in the purse name um, we'll start with this hash sign. So we need to strip that out because obviously our, our IDs are all without this hash sign. And uh, a simple way to do is, is to use substring after and then take out the hash sign. So now if we save this and see how it looks like. Reload the page. Yeah, you can see that <clears throat> we are getting a nice pop-up uh, when we do a mouse over the names. However, the information presented is a bit messed up. Why is that? Yeah, well, because um, if we look at the XML, then inside our purse name, uh, yeah, there's, there's actually a wealth of information. There are several uh, purse names in there. Um, there's date of birth, there's place of birth in, in some 
uh, there's the sex of the, the person, there's an ID number and so on. So we have uh, a number of, of elements and at the moment, because we do not specify anything else, they are all basically displayed, uh, which leads to this a bit messy um, uh, display. So what we would like to do next is um, to somehow bring bring order in, into the display. Um, I think we only want to display, in fact, the uh, purse name type full, followed by maybe a description if available. So some of the some of the persons do have a description. So like here we see that uh, Kurt Nier was stellvertretend uh, Außenminister der DDR. Um, so we would like to limit output to just the purse name type full, followed by the note. Let's do that. How do we do it? Well, we likely need another room, uh, another rule for the element person. So going back to our ODD, um, we add a new element person. And uh, this is still empty. So we have to add something. And because we're going to display multiple things in sequence, we will use the corresponding element in the odd, which is called model sequence. So unlike a sequence of uh, just models, um, where only one would be applied, so only the matching one will be applied, a model sequence allows you to apply multiple models in sequence, as the name says. So we add a model sequence. And into this, we can now store at our first model, which will be for, what did we say? Um, purse name type full. Yeah, so we change this to block to output um, the name on a separate uh, block. And then using parameter content, we point this model to one particular part, one particular child of the person element, which in this case would be a purse name type full. So purse name type full, we actually don't need this. Um, so let's just save it and see what happens. Reloading the document. So now all that that remains in our pop-up is the person's name with type full. So let's add one more thing. We said we would also like to see um, potential notes associated with a person describing that person. So we add another model. Uh, move this behind the purse name type full by clicking on this move down button. And now we just do the same as before. We do block and we use the content parameter to point this model to the node we would like to see. So let's save this again. Go to the document, reload it. And uh, now something weird has happened because the funny thing is that, <laughs> okay, we see the name and we kind of see the note, but it's rendered as a footnote and therefore we are only getting this, this footnote placeholder eight, you know? uh, which is clearly not what we want. Why is that? Well, simple, because a node by default will be rendered as a footnote. So a note in the text um, is supposed to be a footnote. This means that we have to tell um, our ops that um, nodes within person elements should not be treated like normal footnotes, but just displayed. So there are two ways to do it. Um, the easiest certainly is to just change the content parameter to skip over the node and only output its children 
a way to select any child of a node in XPath is to use the node uh, node function. Well, it's not actually a function, it's a path expression, but uh, let's save that. And reload the document. And now you can see that it outputs the text of the node instead of producing uh, a footnote. There's another way to achieve the same. So if we switch this back to output node, then we would again get a footnote. So, But how about if we tell the node element spec that if your parent is a person, you should not output a node, but just display the text. So let's try that. We extend the element spec for node, which by default just produces a footnote. And we add another model above and as predicate we define parent person and in this case we just leave it as is because yeah we want to output it as inline element so save again go to the document reload and yeah as before we are just seeing um, the text of the note. And that's the final item in our pop-up uh, for people. Uh, we would now also like to list the um, corresponding link to um, the Dodis record uh, where more information would be provided. So this link, if we look at XML, this link is contained in an element called ID now. Um, included in the person record. So again, we are going to our odd and we just have to extend our model sequence for person by one more item. So we are adding another model, um, which is always inserted at the top. So we are moving it down again to the very end where we would like it to appear and we change it a block and then as before just use the content parameter to point the model to um, the ID no child. Um, again we have to add an element spec for ID no um, which is empty by default and in there we want to output um, the text content of the ID no but as a clickable link so the user can actually click on it and get to the corresponding page. <clears throat> so the behavior to general link, uh, generate links is just called link and it takes one um, required parameter which is called URI. And for the URI in this case, um, in fact, we just have to use um, the text content. So we are just passing the dot. Uh, we do not need to specify content because content by default will always um, fall back to the dot. So that's already done. So we can save this. Go to the document, reload. And hooray, there's our link. And if we click on it, then we will end up on the corresponding DODIS uh, database page for this person. So now coming to the final part, um, to the final assignment of uh, this part of the workshop on odd editing. Um, we would like to integrate additional metadata from the TI header. If we look at the TI header in the uh, source XML, we'll see that it um, does not only have uh, lists of people and places and so on, but it also has keywords and the language being used. And other um, um, important metadata we would maybe like to show to the user. Um, for now, 
we'll just limit ourselves um, to the summary here though. So this contains a short description, a short summary of the text. And uh, for simplicity, we would just like to output it on top of um, the document content shown below. Um, we we'll later see how to output this kind of information in a separate metadata sidebar, but for now it should be enough to just um, show it on top of the text. Um, for this, we first need to discuss um, what is it that uh, the ODD actually gets from TI Publisher. Does it get the whole document? Um, well, TI documents can be rather large, yeah, so covering hundreds or even thousands of pages. And in many cases, you do not want to display all this um, text uh, to the user at once, but you want to have some kind of pagination applied, which is why TI Publisher by default will always apply pagination. And um, the default pagination method is by text division. So for the Dodis documents, we only always have one single division, but obviously, other documents um, may have uh, multiple chapters and therefore um, many divisions. And TI Publisher would automatically um, paginate the text by division, which means that um, when you open the document the first time, your ODD gets the first division. And then if the user clicks on next page, please, it will get the next division and so on. There are also other pagination methods, like for example, paginate by page break. So that's that's important for documents which do have page breaks um, properly marked up and where you maybe also have facsimile images corresponding to a page. So there you would like to see um, the text page by page, like in the original uh, manuscript. Um, okay, so, but for, for the DOTIS documents, uh, we stick to the default pagination, which is um, by text division. So what our auto will get is um, the outermost div element. So basically, if we look at it down in the body, um, this div type doc is the outermost div, which will be sent to the ODD. So in order to add um, some information to the display, we need to extend this diff and add um, our metadata on top. So let's do that. Go to the ODD. Uh, we create a new element spec for diff. And as you can see, this element spec already contains um, some default models. But all we want to do now is to add a new one for um, div type, what was it? Uh, div type doc. Um, and because we are going to, um, well, we do not only want to just display the metadata, but also the, the text itself of the div, we are going to use a model sequence, not just a model. And in this model sequence, we have to add two things now. So first of all, we want um, this uh, summary from, from the TI header. Oh, okay. And first of all, we want this model sequence to only apply to divs of uh, type doc. Yeah, so actually we can just write um, add type equals doc to limit this div. Uh, to the outermost uh, division because it will always have this type doc attribute. So the first thing we want to display is the, the metadata. So we create um, a block and we then have to select the summary. So as we have seen before, we overwrite the content parameter and uh, we now need to go back to um, the document root, which we can do with root dot. So this will bring us to the outermost TI element in our document. And from there, we just 
um, go down to source desk MS desk and then what we want to see is MS contents and in there the summary so that's the first bit to output but then for sure we also want to process the current diff itself so we add another model to our model sequence move it down to the end of the model sequence and just output in this case a section because it's the main section of the document um, and yeah basically we don't need to do anything else here because by default this will select dot so the current element um, as content so we're just going to save it and reload the document and as you can see we now have um, this additional metadata um, added um, on top of the document view okay so far uh, we have only been displaying um, the text of the document itself but for sure for any serious edition um, you would also want to display additional information um, to the user, for example, a facsimile image uh, to compare with. Um, fortunately, all our DOTIS documents do have um, facsimile images um, linked to. Um, if you look at the XML source, then you'll find that between the TI header um, element and the text element, there's this facsimile element which in fact <clears throat> in this case lists uh, three facsimile images associated with this document so we would like to extend our our main view um, to also display a facsimile ti publisher does already provide a few sample templates uh, which are targeting the the examples we have but the idea is that users can um, reuse them by copying them and just changing things so um, there's already one template which does have uh, this very simple two column um, text facsimile set up um, that's the shakespeare um, example so we can actually try out this template which is changing the template from default single text layout to Shakespeare play in, in this sidebar. So let's just do that. Um, so now the template has, has changed and we can already see the text to the left and to the right, there's an image viewer now, which does not display any images yet. Why? Because obviously it cannot know what images are associated with our document. So there's nothing, nothing to show at the moment. Um, so we would like to extend this very template, which means that we are going to copy this um, Shakespeare template into our own template, and then we will extend that. So to do so, we go to Excite and uh, we open the Shakespeare template, which is called facsimile.html. And like any page templates resides in TI Publisher templates pages. So we open facsimile.html and for the time being the only thing we want to change in there is the description which appears in the sidebar. So at the moment this says Shakespeare play um, and to distinguish it we just enter our own description. In this case, I will use Dodis Wolf just to make sure that um, we are not getting confused. So then I'm going to save this by clicking file save as and again, I will just call it dodiswolf.html. So now I have saved it and I can go back to the document view I will reload the window once to make sure that the, the templates drop down updates. And now 
I should be able to see my own template in there. So I'm going to select this. As expected, not much has changed. After all, we only copied the existing template. So what we need to do now is to somehow inform the image viewer to the right about um, the facsimile images we have available and would like to display with um, the currently um, shown document. Um, this is actually done uh, from within the alt. Um, however, um, because the image viewer is a web component, we also need to output um, little web components from within the odd, which tell the image viewer um, that it should display a certain facsimile image. So we are going um, to our odd again. And um, well, this list of facsimile images, we would also like to output on top of um, the main content, yeah, where currently we output this metadata section with the summary. Um, so basically, we're just going to extend our existing model sequence with one additional model. So let's do that. And in fact, we won't show anything to the user here because all we are going to do is to walk through those graphic elements and display, um, well, generate a web component, which will then send a signal to the facsimile viewer to please load this particular facsimile image and display it. Um, so in here, we don't need to do much. Basically, um, it is sufficient to just overwrite the content parameter and point it to the correct um, graphics element, which would then actually output the web component. Um, so again, this is, um, we have to go from, from, we have to start from the root of the document. So we do root um, dot to get there. And then all we need is the facsimile element. And within the facsimile element, we are actually only interested in the graphic um, elements. So next we need to overwrite graphic. Okay, so there's already one rule in there, which would display an actual image. We don't want to see the images. We just want to send a signal. Um, so we are adding another rule, another model for the case when we have parent facsimile. Because in this case, we don't want to show anything. We want to output a web component. So a web component is just um, a custom HTML element. We talked about that. Um, there are multiple ways to um, output a web component or custom HTML element from within an ODT. The simplest method though is likely to use a template expression. So a template expression can contain any um, XML or also just text content um, using template parameters. So in this case, what we need to output is a custom HTML element called pbfaxlink. And this has an attribute pointing to the corresponding image. So we know that the, um, the path to the image is contained within the URL attribute of the graphic element. But we cannot just write this into our template expression. Um, instead, we have to reference a parameter which we define then below. So we can um, reference a parameter URL by enclosing it in double brackets. Um, and uh, custom HTML all elements always need to be properly closed. And then we can define the parameter URL, uh, which should then get the corresponding 
URL attribute from the graphic element. Let me check if this is correct. Uh, going here, yes. So we have the attribute URL with contain, which contains the name of the image. Okay, there's one additional thing uh, to be noted here, namely that um, all web components, they emit signals into channels. Yeah? And our PB facsimile listens to a channel called transcription. So if we look at the HTML template and we scroll down to the main body where our facsimile appears, we can see that uh, here our PB facsimile element, oops, sorry, subscribes to a channel called transcription. So this means that our PB facsimile link element needs to send its signal into this channel to be understood. Okay, so this mechanism would allow us to have like multiple texts um, reference different facsimile viewers on the same page. Yeah. Um, okay, so but all we need to do is to make sure that our PB fax link emits into the right channel, which would be transcription. So all we have to do is to say emit transcription and uh, then it should go to the right channel. So let's see if this if this works actually. Let's uh, save our ODD and switch back to the view, reload the page and let's see what's happening. Oh yes, so here we have the facsimile image uh, nicely displayed next to the text and we can use the buttons up there um, to switch between the different pages. So as last assignment uh, for today, um, we would like to take the metadata, in particular the document summary, we already um, output at the top of the document, um, take it out there and move it into a separate sidebar. So to get an additional sidebar, what we will do is to just include one more um, web component, one more PB view, which itself is limited to displaying um, the TI header and the information contained therein. So what we will do is we go to our template, in my case, though this wolf, and we just add another column to the two columns we already have. And this will be yet another PB view. And we give it ID metadata so we can reference it from CSS later. Um, it also uses document one as its source description. So that's where it gets the name of the document from the ODD to use and other information which is common to all PB views. But then we do not just want to display the whole document again, that's uh, senseless, but we want to limit this PB view to a particular part of the document. PB view does provide one attribute called XPath and this XPath attribute, as the name says, allows you to specify an XPath expression um, which points to like the root context to be passed to the ODD. So as we heard before, um, by default, TI Publisher would apply pagination and paginate by uh, document division. So what the ODD sees is the outermost diff at first. Using the XPath attribute, we can change this and we can actually change it to just show us the TI header. Um, when doing this, we also want to disable pagination completely. Um, pagination is controlled by another attribute called view. By default, this is set to diff for textual division. 
You can also set it to page for paginate by page breaks, or you can set it to single, which means that you don't want any pagination at all. You just want to display whatever context you are passing to PB view. So that's our, our new PB view. And this information should be enough for now. So we save our template. Um, go to our document view, reload, and we don't see anything. Why is that? Oh, that's because <laughs> we did not yet define what should be displayed for um, TI header. So it's prob probably we have to call them, but it's completely empty because there's nothing to show. Why is that? We will see. We go to our ODD and we have a look at uh, the TI header elements back. We'll overwrite it and just check what's the default. Okay, so the first three models do not apply yeah, because they are either just for um, LaTeX output or um, they do have a predicate. So what's being used by default is the third one, which um, uses behavior metadata. Um, the metadata behavior uh, is actually not very useful because all it does it is it outputs um, a title the the, uh, the title element in the html head which has no effect on display of the document on the page so that's why we are not seeing anything so we are going to change this and instead of um, calling metadata behavior uh, we will call uh, the block behavior and then we set parameter content again as we did so often before and we use it to point exactly um, to the bit we wanna we wanna have displayed, which is in source desk MS desk MS um, MS contents summary. So that's what we would like to see um, as information in this column. Uh, so we navigate from the RNT I header, and we just navigate down to source desk. MS desk MS contents and summary. That's the only bit we want to see. Um, the paths you enter here, they just have to be unique. Um, so it's clear that source desk, MS desk, MS contents, they only exist within the TI header and nowhere else. So we could as well just shorten this to um, dot slash slash, which means um, any descendant below the current element, um, MS contents, and then summary. Um, so if we save this and then have a look again, we should hopefully see our new <coughs> sidebar column appear. Oh yes, there it is. Unfortunately, um, it messes up the styling quite a bit because it's obviously too wide um, and the text is too small and the facsimile is too small. Um, we can easily change that with a bit of uh, CSS. So we are going to our HTML template and what's being used here within content body is a CSS free feature called um, flex layout for flexible layout. And <clears throat> it basically allows you to align uh, multiple columns next to each other in a horizontal um, in horizontal direction. Um, however, the sizing of those columns will be um, highly dynamic, so they will grow or shrink depending on how much space is currently available. So the algorithm will distribute available space between the single contents columns. And it gives more space to a column which has a higher priority. So, and less space to a column which has a lower priority. So you can specify those priorities, which is what we want to do. So at the moment, if we look at content body, um, 
and content body contains well it contains a pb facsimile but it also contains an element an pb view element with id view one and both of them they have this weird uh, flex uh, um, property this flex property actually gives the priority so at the moment they have both the growth priority one and shrink priority one which means they are treated equally if more space is available on the page or if less page uh, space is available um, but we don't say anything about our third added component which is um, the metadata component so first of all we likely need to give our meta metadata column a low priority so we do one one um, but for view one we want it to grow to have a higher priority when there's more space to be distributed so we change it from one to three and likewise the facsimile we want to be about the same size as um, the main text view so we also change that to three then we save go back to our document view reload and we can see that the summary has now neatly been uh, resized and gets just uh, less than half the space of um, our text view and the facsimile which is probably what we want um, so now there's just one thing remaining which is that we now have the summary twice we have it on top of the main text content and we have it in our sidebar so let's remove um, the one we added before to the main uh, text column uh, go to the ODD and again we did this uh, within the <coughs> outermost division we had this um, model sequence and basically the second model in our model sequence is the one which outputs uh, here MS contents summary so all we need to do is just get rid of it by clicking on delete then save again go back to our document view reload and there we are so now we already arrived at quite a nice um, layout we can read the text we have the facsimile we have some metadata we ex could extend the metadata column now with additional uh, metadata like keywords and so on but that's something i will leave to you and well see you uh, tomorrow bye bye